Skills for this, it depends on which department you're going in. Obviously, if you go into the art department, you'd want to have a certain amount of draftsman skills and things like that. If you go into special effects, uh, if you go into physical special effects, you've got to have some form of engineering qualifications. <coughs> uh, if you go into visual effects, obviously, you've got to have knowledge about film and computers and what you can do. Um, uh, camera you can learn, obviously that's one you can learn. Uh, I think an on production side and assistant directors, I think you've just got to have common sense and... Um, Most people think they do have that when they don't really, you know what I mean? And I suppose the key factor is sort of the way you work with other people. No, that's, that's very important. I, I think I've often talk to film students and, and uh, they have a very wrong impression of what you need and or what is needed and they don't quite realise sometimes that it's quite hard work. I'm sure the ones here tonight do know what, you know, that we've got some students um, but I know and um, it must it must be so difficult indeed. Um, like I used to God, I don't know, 25, 30 years ago, I actually really wanted to be a film director. Um, I did work experience at the local TV station and stuff, and then I decided to work. I wanted to work with radio, but it's you need to have a certain mindset, don't you? I suppose and motivation and real determination. And do you think you have to have a big knowledge of the industry and who's who? And no, I don't think. No, I, no, I don't think you can possibly know that. Mm. Uh, you have to have good discipline, mm. uh, good self-discipline. Um, no, the industry is so vast now. It, it was when I joined. It was very much like a club. Um, you worked with the same people all the time. <clears throat> I mean, all my first years, I worked at Pinewood. And it was the rank organisation, so everything was produced by the rank organisation. Um, 
and uh, you would finish a film on a Friday night and start a new one on a Monday morning and you hadn't, hadn't even read the script. You just were given a job because you were being paid. Mm -hmm. And, um, and Ada you know, and all the actors had lunch in the restaurant and all smoked cigars and nowadays <laughs> they all have a private caravan and you have <coughs> 10 security guards and you never see them. Um, I think it's pathetic nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's nice for people to come together and just hang out and be part of a family, which one thing I'm quite interested did you feel part of the Bond family? It's like Eon Productions, you've got Barbara Broccoli and uh, Michael G. Wilson mm. and you know, other key people who worked on lots of Bond films and you worked on lots. Did you feel part of Oh family? yeah, you're you part did. of the family and right. still, still are. Yeah. You know, um, uh, I, <coughs> to, I emailed Barbara only two or three days ago about a, a, a lunch that we're arranging with an old Bond pal who's been working your way on the Y50 for nine years, he's oh. coming back, <laughs> and I was hoping that she might be able to join us. But Did she get back to you? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. she's never replied to anyway. No, <laughs> no, no, no. no I, I did mention you, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, well, okay, well that's good. Oh um, no, we're, we're still part of the Good stuff. Yeah, Paul Slade, that place near Eastbourne, Paul, that's the one, um, and um, yeah, thanks for him for helping with the clips, um, also to Juries in Hotel and Cote or Coat Restaurant, where I went there earlier with Anthony and mm -hmm. Patricia, and finally to our sponsor, Brighton Film School, they're fabulous, um, <laughs> and to Christopher and Anthony White, and thank you very much for coming this evening. <laughs>